the thing that I've added to the arcade this week, it's changed my life. It has, guys. It's actually changed my life quite profoundly. Get ready for the next one. Hey guys, welcome to Spacey's Arcade and welcome to the second part of the 2018 Arcade Update Plan. And today we're going to have a look at the, well the second part obviously. <laughs> so if you haven't checked out the first part, you better go check that out now. Uh, in that video we uh, had a look at the Astro City, the Astro Blast. Um, we took a quick look at World Rally, actually we took a long look at World Rally because I had such a good game. And uh, we look at Super Sprint, the virtual pin, uh, the triple screen main setup, and the Daytona machine. So if you did miss that episode, flick back, check that one out first, and hit us back up here for this part two. Now we're going around the remaining machines. And guys, um, I've got a bit of a surprise for you. And um, I've got a new addition to the arcade that happened this week and it wasn't expected again <laughs> but it's not I don't think going to be anything that you would suspect but I tell you what the thing that I've added to the arcade this week it's changed my life it has guys it's actually changed my life quite profoundly um, so we're going to talk about that a bit later when I introduce you to the change. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get started though and let's start looking at the machines in order. <clears throat> we need to start back in the corner here at the Neo Geo. We'll work our way around to that surprise. Um, can you guess what it is? <laughs> Might be a bit of a hint in this shot actually for you smart guys that know the channel well. Anyway, we shall we'll find out soon enough. Let's go take a look at the Neo Geo. So guys, the cute little Neo Geo. <laughs> um, yep, I've said it plenty of times. I love this little cab. It's obviously very different to the big cabs of the US and also the uh, the big four slots that we get here, the big LAI, LAI ones. This is a low boy form factor and love this little guy. Changed the joysticks out recently, if you recall, and um, it works really, really nice. I guess the only thing uh, I do want to do is sort of general tidy up of this thing. Um, all these pieces of metal need to come off. I need to get those sprayed black at some point. So this machine is really just sort of hanging out for a general once over. Um, getting cleaned up, a few things you know repainted and just spruced up. And the big thing though is the monitor. So the monitor does work, it works fine, um, but there is very is limited brightness, guys. This is not is nowhere near as bright as you can see with the machine next door here. In fact, this is looking like it's sort of blowing out in co in contrast with this or comparison with this. But it's this one that's actually really really dim. So. I don't know, uh, should be just a chassis fix. I don't think it's a tube when it's dim. Um, you need to rejube it maybe. Not sure. Um, I haven't come across a situation where I've had just like a really dim um, monitor before. And it's also, I think I, I try tuning it up and trying to make it sharper. It still looks like it's a little bit out of focus. So maybe it is the chassis still, guys. Anyway going to do that at the moment um, if you go back to one of the episodes before I talked about the Neo SD remember that's in here playing on FPGA hardware uh, in the cart itself on original Neo Geo hardware awesome setup able to play all the games FPGA um, hardware emulation effectively and um, can select between all the Neo Geo games so yeah I, I just love this little guy I did mention before I think on a previous video that um, this machine might you know the days were numbered in here <laughs> um, if I got another machine this one might have to go but I've changed my tune and, and you'll you'll find that all the way through my journey guys as I, I do change my tune I, I think of certain things and at that point in time I'm like that's it that's what I'm gonna do and then 
again, I sort of think about things and other things present themselves and then I change my mind. So it's the nature of us humans, right? We're allowed to do that. Um, so anyway, let's have a quick game of Blue's Journey. I, to be honest, I really have not played this game, like, you know, probably just not seriously at all. So <laughs> let's, let's give it a shot. Okay, let's start. How to play, hmm, jump, change, size. Well, I have to read this because, hmm. <laughs> I love how the Neo Geo games do this with all the instructions at the front of each game. It's sort of quite unique to the platform. Uh, and I didn't get all those instructions, so let me see. That's big, small, that's me jumping. What else am I doing? I'm doing that. <laughs> oh, okay. They don't die, obviously. It's just as a, oh, okay. So, got to, got to run into it. Okay, what the hell? <laughs> Dinosaurs? Yeah, so, I've, okay, I've got to hit it, and I've got to hit them, and then you can pick them up, by the looks of things. Yeah, and then chuck them. Oh, that's bizarre. And then I get these flowers. Okay, cool. I'm learning, I'm learning fast here, guys. Oh, and I've got a time limit, by the looks of things. <laughs> uh, you can see I have absolutely zero idea. Um, cute, really cute. Oh, in, 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 how do we get in? How do we get in, guys? Oh, little? Yep, little, okay. Um, see the large river ahead? Well, I think I did. There was a river, wasn't there? Okay, yep. Uh, it's good if you know it, you can rent my boat. Ask for a leaf made boat. That's not gonna be a very good boat. Ask for a boat made of mud. Not necessary. Hmm, I think, oh crap. Wow, <laughs> indecision did it say, gets you nowhere. Well, give me a chance to read the, read the options. It's a bit, a bit unfair. Um, now we can do a bit of a good old jungle hunt from, from the eighties. <laughs> Why can't I, okay. <laughs> wow, guys, you blues, um, Jenny guys must be thinking, what a noob. But I'm trying, it's sort of, it's it's pretty cool. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm liking this little, oops, I'm not liking that. Um, I think if, clearly if you, okay, I'm getting confused now. Clearly if you uh, play this a lot, get used to these controls, I could imagine this could be a fun, fun game. I like the music too. And again, the graphics, not only are they cute, they're just really well done. And I think, again, if I had a really nice monitor here, this would pop so much better. This game would look awesome. So, isn't it cool that, you know, I've got the opportunity to play games like this that clearly are a form of classic, when I haven't really played them before, um, and now I can spend the time to do it. So this is sort of one of those games I think I'm gonna keep going, you know, keep keep on here and not change the game so I can get better at it. I'm not just firing missiles at me now. Getting a bit harder. Shop. Now this time I better decide what I want. <laughs> go in there. Welcome. Welcome. Okay we got a fairy, cool. Time, I've only got, okay, a certain amount of time. What the hell is this though? Flower, honey, 10 flowers, stamina recovered. Probably need that. Let's just go for that. Anything else? Well, what else? Light safe? Why don't I pick a light safe? Why do I want to carry a light safe around? <sighs> wow, this game is confusing. Whoa. Okay, what happened there? Okay, now I'm firing. Yay, 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 yay. Wow, it's started getting pretty hard there, guys. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm huge. <laughs> this is actually really cool. Together I can just cruise for anyone while I'm big. Uh, a lot to do, man, in this game. A lot to keep a hold of, I think. Be pretty challenging here. 
Oh. I'm still in. Yeah. I think I've still got two lives left. I've got two hearts. Did I get a few extra hearts or something? Alright. Obviously, there's lots to do about leaves. <laughs> I'm whacking people with leaves. It's not normally the weapon of choice, is it, really, guys? Okay, getting busy here. I need to start. Okay, yep, throwing them. Right. <laughs> oh, a huge. Whoa, why couldn't I get that huge crown? Okay, is that like the end of the. Hmm. Was I supposed to do something with that crown, guys? Obviously, got to the end of the stage. But in all seriousness, this is the first time I've got here. I've really only just sort of, you know, always started this game and never actually sort of played it. Sort of tested to make sure it works. Had a quick look. Just never gave it. Okay, obviously they can't go on the big thing there. And now, now I'm out. Give a hand to Ragi's Ragi's people. Give a hand to a bad guy. Bad guy. <laughs> Is that just talk to me? Hmm. So many questions, guys. No answers. <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed that. All right, let's uh, cruise through to the next big machine here, the LAI Fat Boy. Let's take a look. So the LAI Fat Boy machine, because it's wide, it's fat. <laughs> Great form factor, this machine. Absolutely love it. And pick this one up for a really good price. And the intention for this one, guys, is that it's, I mean, it's currently running a multi uh, multi game using the Jammer Pi. And it's this big 25 inch screen, which is what really drew me to it. And because it's a sort of a common LAI cab, as such, a generic sort of cab, with such a beautiful, nice, big CRT screen. This, the intention here is that this is gonna be my replacement main box. And I have said this a few times in the past. It's just gonna take a while to get there, guys, because just in the last video, I'm not ready to take my other main box down with the fridge in it. <laughs> I don't have a solution for where the fridge will go, and the fridge is very important. Uh, so this is sort of just gonna stay like it is, um, I think for the short term at least. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, playing side by side, two player, nice big screen um, with a good, real good mix of games on the Jammer Pi. Uh, is, I'm absolutely loving it. Now the, now, the thing that you may have noticed if you've seen this machine before, guys, is that the marquee has changed and it's got a light behind it now. So I fixed that. I took this, um, had a crack at this machine the other day. A few things were bugging me about it, and one was that the marquee light wasn't going. So we placed over the um, uh, replace the tube and uh, also had the aliens vs predator um, and street fighter combination marquee and it was printed on some pretty ordinary inkjet paper guys and it looked pretty bad with the light so I took that out I've replaced it with the skins game I've actually got the real hardware for the skins game I believe my hard disk is faulty um, we're looking at potentially down the track um, there is a solution where you swap the hard drive out for like an SD card and stuff so we might try that out at some point. I've got the other controls, the special controls for that skins game as well. Maybe we could hook that into a control panel and sort of hook it in temporarily. I don't know. Well, it's one, one of those strange things, actually, guys, is once you start getting more cabs, I must admit the whole thing about replacing control panels and having, you know, the multi-control panel stuff, it starts to fade a little bit. You sort of start thinking, nah, really just want to have one control panel, <laughs> just leave it at that and have another machine to deal with uh, some other control scheme. But we'll see, that's definitely way off down the track. For the moment, this is going to stay as a multi game. Um, now the other cool thing on here guys is that I did mention previously is that this monitor had some blurring issues on the right hand side and I was really confused about that because like why is it only blurred on one side you know the focus would normally tune the whole thing up if it was a sort of a chassis general problem it would sort of affect most of the screen I, I would think I know you can get some you know distortion and stuff which you can fix out um, with some of the settings or you know some of the pots but yeah, that really threw me. I was just had this horrible sort of blurring on the right hand side. And as you can see now, guys, it's absolutely crystal. 
<laughs> and the reason why, it was just dirt. It was dirt. Now I remember sort of looking at the at the perspex, thinking, "Is that dirt under there?" And it sort of looked it looked a bit cloudy. But you know, anyway, I took the whole thing off, guys. And when I took a, 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 a paper towel to the side of the monitor, it just came out black. <laughs> Not so much on this side. So clearly, wherever it was sitting, it was just you know something was blowing in and blowing in gunk for, of some type. Um, and yeah, that's all it was. So it just goes to show, guys. Sometimes just a good old uh, clean of the monitor. <laughs> I love get, I love getting problems like that that are solved with such an easy solution. Right? It doesn't happen often, um, but when it does, it's very welcome. So it's looking pretty cool, guys. Um, I still have not done these buttons on here though, and that is bugging me. So still have uh, missing buttons from when I picked it up. They wanted to be swapped out. I actually need to do one big buy up actually of a whole load of buttons. It's a number of buttons I actually need guys. I need to I need to sit down and make a shopping list. Get those sorted out. In the interim, um, yeah, we're ready to roll. So look, let's pick a game here and uh, have a crack at something. Okay, let's play a bit of Dragon Breed. Right, another game I am not familiar with. But we should give it a crack. Now the other thing I put in here guys is I put a 2.1 sound system in. You know how I like doing that and like changing them out putting a nice little 2.1 in there. Get some really nice bass happening and uh, I had to get a little bit creative with the speakers behind the back. Um, they weren't going to fit where the original speakers were because they were enclosed of course in a 2.1 setup. So I should put a couple of brackets and I've got them hooked up behind there. Sounds absolutely mint. And now with this beautiful uh, screen all nice and clear and sensational. Now I can't quite get ex actually everything lined up here. The settings won't quite allow me to get the screen position exactly right. And the different games, you know, are sometimes a little bit different. I might be losing a bit off the top there, I'm not sure. Um, but regardless of that, it is absolutely superb. In fact, I can see I'm losing a little bit of the time off the bottom um, of this part here. But uh, yeah, look, other than that small gripe, I think that's just a mating of the particular tube and the chassis. Um, and who knows, the chassis could need a, a, uh, some of jo Joey's uh, magic. Um, but for now, it looks so nice, I think we'll just run with it. Okay, let's go. Now, another game, guys, that I am not familiar with. Um, but it looks really cool. I did sort of check it out very briefly the other day. And I was sort of trying to work out if you can actually control the dragon around the back of you or it's just the way that you move. Does the other buttons control it at all? It doesn't look like it. So it sort of just moves along with you, but that dragon will kill, kill the other guys. If, oh, wow. <laughs> You only need it to hit you on top of the dragon and you're gone, of course. Um, but I thought it was a quite a nice little game dynamic having this dragon. Look at that, it sort of breathes fire. Yeah, it's actually quite, quite unique. Beautiful big sprites. I feel like that, yeah, you can sort of crush them from behind like that. It's, it's actually quite bizarre. You, it's, it doesn't seem sort of natural to sort of figure out how to use the dragon to your best advantage. Um, it's sort of like, oh well, if it gets a few guys, then that's a good thing. I don't know what those power-ups are. What's that giving me? Oh, it's shooting out from the side here. Um, but yeah, the graphics on this is just really nice. Okay, so how did it, why did it do that? See that? See how it switches around like that? Is that because I got one of the power-ups and it's doing that automatically when it gets danger? Or is that a little bit sophisticated? <laughs> if I just let it sit. Oh, <laughs> wow. Don't let it sit. <sighs> I like this game though, guys. I think this is another one which would be cool to just sort of have here. I wonder if... Is this a two player where you can have two player on the screen at once? That would be cool. Um, but otherwise this is a, this looks like it would be a cool game to 
spend some time get used to. Got the flamethrower again, I pick that up. Get that, how do I get that? Do I shoot that? What do I do with that? Oh wow. Got me, game over. <laughs> yeah, I reckon uh, definitely gonna give this some more love. But what do you think guys? This machine is looking pretty tidy, right? I'm pretty happy with it. All right, let's rock on to the Hyper Olympic. Right, well on this channel guys, I have talked about this machine a lot. So definitely, I don't think it's um, worth having a game right now on it. Not, not that I don't dislike it, I love this game, but we have covered it many, many times. This game hasn't changed a lot, so it's pretty much stayed as it has been since I did the monitor fix. And I must admit, it's just beautiful. Um, and I, you know, I still love this, this, this game. Um, I love the fact that this is a dedicated control panel, which was looked like it was part of a conversion kit, a legit, legitimate one. I've always wondered if I should actually fix this control panel or not, because it's really, really ripped away here. But, you know, it's one of those things, eh? It's like, it's, I'm really sort of holding on to the patina on some of these things, guys. So I'm not too sure about that. It's a little bit like the cigarette burns. I sort of like that. <laughs> it just gives it the whole thing, the character. Of course, um, in this Taito red cabinet, the big thing that drew me to it originally in the episode, way, way, way back when we did the pickup, was the fact that this was originally a Defender cab and that has a very special sentiments for me or um, memories for me back in New Zealand because the New Zealand Defenders were released in these Taito cabs. And um, not like the US with the dedicated ones, but they, they were released over there like that. And in the back here, it actually had, you know, it's got the staple in there showing that this was originally a Tata Defender before it was converted. Love to be able to get the Defender back in here. Um, if anything, I think the plan for this guy is um, at some point I may, I'm leaning towards the multi FPGA because I was going to do a multi Williams. If you remember, I was going to use the old championship sprint cab for that. Um, that's not going to work out now. So I think this guy might be the one. Um, maybe if I keep the original PCB in for Hyper Olympic and again do that swap out of the control panels, which I'm sure I'm not going to do. Um, I mean, this game, guys, is one that actually can be run pretty easily um, on the Jabba Pi, you know, and with a six button setup on each, each side on your normal Jabba Pi setup with two joysticks. I mean, you've got three buttons to play with on either side. You can easily play it on, on you know, on the uh, LAI Fat Boy. So I really don't need a dedicated cab for this. Um, it's just as nice that it is <laughs> and you know back in the day of uh, ice skating and, and stuff we used to uh, play the video games at the ice skating rink and this was a key staple game there we used to play all the time with the setup um, so yeah I think um, we'll leave it for now and then uh, in the future I, I, I think I will look at that multi Williams it would be cool to play Defender in here and I can get back to when I was, you know, whatever age I was, 10 or 11 or whatever, when I was down at that dairy looking up at that Defender game in this cabinet in awe, <laughs> in awe, shock and awe with the graphics and the sound that was coming out of the thing. Um, very special memories indeed. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's always say for this machine for the moment, let's move along to the Spaceys. So Space Invaders, the original. Uh, again, I've done a, a couple of episodes, a few special, well, one in particular where I covered sp this species um, for that entire episode and a bit of history on it. So I'm, I certainly won't repeat all of that stuff. Definitely go check that episode out, guys, though, if you're interested in Space Invaders and really the birth of the golden era in arcade games. Um, since then, we've installed the brace kit uh, if you recall I had some problems with the uh, with the board and I actually had bought the brace kit a long time ago gave me a good reason to install it to see if it would fix the problem and interestingly ever since I've, I uh, put the brace kit in it has fixed the problem it has identified it as a self test every time it starts up and I get this uh, fail next to the bit where it says bit test um, so there still appears to be something wrong with the board as such. Um, but now with the brace kit installed, now that it is bypassing all the original ROMs and playing 
uh, off the uh, the ROM set on the uh, daughter brace board. It is running absolutely flawlessly once I start it. So I can actually just hit start and bang, we are into spaces and I wouldn't know that I had the brace kit in there and it's absolutely 100% stable. So without a doubt guys, I know these boards are pretty temperamental and there's a lot of boards out there that don't actually work. Um, the braze kit is the way to go, it gives you all the self-test um, stuff, plays fantastic, it's playing obviously on the original hardware, it's just a daughter board on top of the processor, bypassing the main program ROMs, um, then just you know uh, running its own set, and of course it's a multi-game, so you've got uh, the ability to play other games in the same era in terms of hardware, so we've been playing Spaces before guys, so maybe we should... Um, have a crack at one of the other games on here on the multi game setup so I'll just hook into it and we can see here we've got um, Space Invaders uh, Deluxe which is really quite nice Space, Space Invaders Deluxe on here I like the Space Invaders Deluxe uh, overlay better than the original one so because it's a lot more colorful <laughs> uh, but we won't play Spaces, we're actually going to play something very different, we're going to play Lunar Rescue some of these other games like the Bloom Bomber is pretty cool uh, the Jack to Spectre is another uh, form of Space Invaders and I think that one's got the one where this, the, um, the main mothership shoots down which is the same as Space Invaders Part 4 which I mentioned uh, previously which is an awesome little feature um, Space Laser, Galaxy Wars, I can't remember what, the, what those were now, haven't played them for a while, um, and Super Earth Invasion, was that a really really difficult version of Space, he's not sure, but anyway let's have a crack at Lunar Rescue, this is definitely uh, one of my uh, favourites as a dedicated game, um, but it, again so cool to have it in here and be able to play some of these variations in the original Spaces cap, let's give it a crack. Remember the other cool thing on this, guys, is that uh, sets up for free play um, with the Braze kit in. So you go down and pick up these uh, different, uh, land on these different platforms and shoot your way back up. Of course, you can't stop yourself from ascending but you can speed yourself up by pressing the, holding down the, the fire button otherwise when you press it of course you fire um, press to release and then I can press the fire button to slow myself down and I've got to rescue these guys, get them back up to the mothership and initially it sort of starts off fairly slow and relatively easy and then it builds up, adds some uh, added uh, added problems and challenges. <laughs> the, the comet, the comets are the big ones. I think they might come on this this screen. Let's see. No, not this screen maybe next. A little bit crowded here. And you just sort of got to get close to the mothership, and it just opens up. Again, this uh, machine I think was released either with a cellophane version or an actual full colour version. I can't remember. I know the actual stand-up machine is normally um, with full sort of colour, at least colour bands. Looks really nice. <clears throat> I think the one I played back in the day, um, we just had an amber, amber screen. It might have been just a complete single amber overlay, if I remember rightly. All right, now I'm down to the last two platforms. Looks like those um, comments don't come out maybe until the second level. So it's a little bit trickier. Um, did they come here? They, did I get an extra man? I think I did. Zoom up here. There we go. And you've only got a certain amount of fuel there, you can see as well, guys. So you can't just, uh, you know, sit here like that, you've got to get down, there's some little mines, those little flashing dots, you got to watch out for those, still haven't got the comets, so I must be on the next bit, I thought they came earlier, maybe there's some different difficulties, alright, so there we go, cleared the level. Get 
that's a bonus for the men. Alright. Let's get down here and start getting a little bit faster and a shoot more I think. Certainly a little bit quicker there. Get through there, it's a little bit tricky. Too bad. And I don't know guys, this is one of those um, games actually is sort of a bit therapeutic. <laughs> it's, um, there we go, there's those big comets. A bit tough to get around. Um, it's sort of, yeah, it's sort of, it does get a bit frantic, but I don't know. It's just this whole flow of sort of, you know, floating down here. Gives you a bit of a break from firing and killing things. And getting back up is where the stress happens. So it's funny those comets come out on that last one, but not this one. And this is turning into a bit of the uh, a game like um, the World Rally guys. <laughs> I'm on a roll. There we go, these. Okay, you notice the spaceship actually stopped there, so I had to get myself lined up um, for where he was positioned. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> That's where it starts getting a little tricky. Take a few more risks, seems I'm doing okay. And I never used to play anywhere near this well back in the day, which is quite bizarre. And maybe, I don't know, maybe now it is quite simple. It's a little bit like obviously original Space Invaders is so slow. And when you play so many games, let me go for this guy. Got them all, there we go. Um, when you play so many games and, you know, obviously this was at the starting point where all these games were made. So I didn't really know about how good people would get. Um, but you certainly don't want people hanging around on one 20 cent coin for too long. Um, but you know, I don't know, I mean I haven't, I don't play this game a lot. I, I did back in the day. Um, is it like riding a bike? <laughs> if I just, is this all coming back to me? Whoa, it's getting a little bit busy there. Still okay though. Okay, for this difficult one. Ah, well. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a way to die, guys. <laughs> Smash it to the platform. Oh, some hero. <laughs> You're doing so well, man. You're killing all the, all the aliens. You're a boy, a boy, good pilot. And you go crash into the platform. So yeah, guys, don't do that. Oh shoot, <laughs> I can flick through there. I must admit, I'm getting a little bit flippant with it now. We've been playing for a little while. I'm gonna bore you guys with this game. <laughs> Actually, to try and get through there then. So look, you can die quickly. Uh, that definitely shows it. Put in a much bigger name than Dad, but that will do, guys. Cool fun though, again as I said, it's one of those games you can sit there, look at that, 1979. You can sit there and just, um, I don't know, sort of relax with that game. Give it a try, give it a go and maim if you haven't played it. Alright, let's move around. So guys, by now you might be thinking, well where is this, uh, where is this big life changing thing in the, in the, uh, the arcade? Haven't seen it yet, have we? We will get to it, don't you worry. For now though, we want to have a quick look at the Hankin Cocktail. And again, what a beautiful machine this is. Beautiful big 20 inch screen can be mounted vertically or horizontally. When I picked it up, I had it horizontal. We had an original Wonder Boy, well a bootleg version of Wonder Boy, mind you. 
and uh, I did play that game for a little bit. Um, the music drove me to distraction. I know it's a favourite of many people, but that it just <laughs> drove me out of the wall. Just completely repeat, repeating, repeating. I thought, wow, if they didn't have that music, that game would be so much better, actually. The thing about this one, though, guys, is that um, these cocktail machines are just so nice. Head to head, playing with a friend. Put your drinks on the table here. You know, when it's not your turn, you sit back, have a drink, watch the other person. It really is a great way to play these old arcade games, without a doubt. Um, you know, and I do see people obviously buy cocktail machines with that thought in mind. You know, I do see the uh, the three-sided ones, which I'm not that keen on, the, <laughs> the retrofitted ones. I think getting a good original one's good. You know, get the original, like the Tato's, I've got a couple of those, um, the Tato cocktails with slightly, with the smaller screen, but they're still really, really nice. Um, in fact, of course, those earlier games were built in mind with smaller screens anyway, and they just look deluxe. Um, but I must admit, I do do like this one, um, and I like it even more, the fact that, you know, I scraped away all that horrible silver paint that was on this thing, and the black paint, and got to the beautiful wood that's under here such a hidden gem it was um, and again there's an episode back there guys if you want to see that one where I did the transformation um, so yeah head to head game so I think at some point I haven't actually gone through and updated all of these I want to group them into two sort of sets and have just all the um, classic games that supported the flipping of the screen for cocktail mode not all of them do not all of them that support that even some of the older ones um, so I want to make sure I get all those sorted and, uh, and then still have a, a, a number of the, you know, single player ones um, that I can play on this side that don't flip. And uh, just have the option there, guys, of being able to play both sets. Because this is actually really nice, even back with the couch, um, if I'm sitting here uh, watching a you know, show or whatever, and there's, you know, a time in between or watching the footy. Um, talking about the, um, the EPL, of course. <laughs> not, not Australian rules, um, right into uh, the EPL. But, um, you know, when there's a break or whatever, or a half time, then it's great to just, you know, sit forward and, and play this. It's right here. And, you know, with all your all your stuff, your snacks and drinks and bits and pieces, it's just, it's just an awesome little co coffee table. So, highly recommended, guys. Highly recommended. Now, this game, actually, I want to play. Um, Galaga 88. Now, I'm, I'm definitely going to do a special, guys, on the original Galaga at some point, because that really... Um, was pretty substantial in terms of my uh, growing up um, and my early early uh, um, go at video games as it progressed out from Galaxian and stuff. So we'll talk about that another day. Um, but we will look at Galaga 88, which it f followed on from. Well, Galaga 88 obviously followed on from the original Galaga. Um, really cool, really nice version really really good update um, from the original oh, one final thing guys is you're going to see some colors are all askew up the top here um, it needs to be degaus i don't have the degaussing set up on this monitor it's something that i need to do the wiring in here i just it's horrible it needs to all actually be ripped out and redone so at some point monitor is going to come out going to get the degauss coil hooked up um, and I'm going to sort out the wiring once and for all because at the moment I'm, I, I, it's really quite risky. <laughs> it's almost a bit of a, a fire risk. Um, no, it's not that bad, but it just it, it could definitely do with some tidying up. All right, let's uh, let's crack on and have a, uh, a game of Gallego 88. Okay, let's go. Now, the thing is with this game, you can actually start off with two ships and then build up to three ships unlike the original version so you can actually start off with two instead of a one so let's let's do the the two because the original galaga for those of you that know it was all about getting one ship and then getting two getting caught to get two now when you get three it just turns into a a single bigger ship which is cool um but it's certainly a hell of a lot easier when you've uh you've got two ships Oh, I don't want to kill all those guys because some of those guys will pick me up and try and get the third ship going. Um, but what I thought was really cool about this is it just it, it keeps it keeps to the original style. Here we go. Get picked up. 
Um, it keeps to the original style and gameplay, but the graphics are updated. All the you know the enemies are updated, um, while still sort of keeping the whole theme going. It's just really, really well done. I love what they've done with the extra graphics. So you go from two men into a single one, which is sort of your your third, and I'll have uh, three three fire buttons now. Um, and this game, yeah, the way the levels are, you you need two or three fire. You got one fire, it's sort of painfully slow, or just difficult, really. Now, unlike the original, it does some freaky stuff. Um, we do the challenge stage, which they call that's galactic dancing. So it's very similar to the original from that point of view. Um, but there's some other stages in here that are quite bizarre. I've got to pick up these little things that drop, not on this, not on the challenge stage, but in the other stages. And that once you get two, three of them, you warp to another dimension. Um, it really is quite cool. And then the gameplay sort of, oh Jesus. <laughs> it's just typical, isn't it? <sighs> Didn't quite get 40. Just talking too much. I always thought this was a bit weird though, how it had the block colour. Does that have it like that on the original, guys? If anyone's got original, that's the thing I've got to pick up. If anyone's got original um, Gallagher 88, because obviously this is effectively MAME, of course. Um, tell me, let me know if it's got that big green box. I always thought that was weird, it just looks odd. The game is so polished in all other respects, it just seems weird that they'd have that big green box. Look how this is so nice how you're sort of moving. Here's another one of those things. Um, it's like you're moving through space towards other worlds. You've still got that beautiful star field going on in the background, which, which I always uh, loved from the original Galaxian, let alone Galaga that then followed it. Okay, no extra ones there. She might be just, is it just the, I think after this screen, the two little things that I picked up go up in the middle of the screen and then I actually um, warp to this really weird dimension. Let's see if it happens now. I can't remember if it does. Oh no, we've got another uh, challenging stage. Okay, these get really difficult. which is just the same in terms of the original game, obviously completely different patterns, <laughs> but they also got really hard on the later stages. Oh, that's just doing my head in. <laughs> Love the music, eh? Ah, uh, Mr. Kapoa. Ah, uh, Miss Three. Now it goes, yep, here we go. Now we hit this uh, dimension warp. How cool is that? See, and again, this blue box, that's just strange. So the music all changes, and we get into this whole sort of different format. And we get these uh, asteroids. You've got to shoot several times before they die. All these guys, which I can never get all of them. Um, and once you get past this, then they all come in and sort of like... And, and, and it just gets really hectic here, guys. This is where it starts getting really hard. Um, but, oh, again, I just, I just love what they did with this. You know, it gives it a bit of variation. And the music is so cool. This little... Oh, the Twilight Zone. <laughs> and all these little monsters and that are uh, so cool. They're very different. Whew. Okay, here we go again, guys. That'll be tough. Oh, got hit. Back to two men. Just so much harder. Oh shoot, I could have got picked up. Oh wow, which is well I didn't. Because <laughs> uh, I'm down onto my last man after uh, this one. And that's what can happen in this game. It just flips you out so quickly. 
We do have the high score here, mind you. Which is not too shabby, although I'll probably reset it at some point. Better start focusing, eh? Oh, great. So now I'm against the big dude, the big boss. Um, of course, they didn't have bosses in the original. Uh, I guess the way the, all the games evolved since then, they all started having bosses. So, a nice little mix of uh, gameplay from the later 90 game, uh, you know, well, leading up to the 90s, being Gallagher 88, of course, um, with bosses. Nice of them to add that, that in. Well, I didn't even kill the guy. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> cool. <laughs> wow. Wow. See that, guys? That's just insane. Look at him. He's cool. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> And that's how you just, I just tend to die so quickly on those later stages. And look where I got. I got nowhere near this. And, and guys, I think my furthest is the end of this stage here. I haven't got further. So, because I, I love this game so much, I really, again, it's another one of those ones. I just need to keep it sitting here. And this, this is the game that this cabinet plays for a while. And see if I can move my way through here. How far have you guys got if you've played this game? Because it seems to get really friggin' hard. I'd love to see these other um, areas though to see how different they are. Anyway, absolute crack. I don't think it's a saving high scores. Um, absolute cracking game, guys. Love it. All right, let's move around to the next one. We are at the Grand Champion cab, guys. And where is that big surprise? <laughs> Not yet. Gotta wait. The Grand Champion Cab. The cocktail. Oh, it's cocktail. The cockpit. It's just awesome. <laughs> it's just crazy. And uh, I still, when I'm sitting here on the couch looking over at this thing, I'm just <laughs> still in love with it. Um, oh, graphics are just so, so nice. And now that I've done a bit of research because of the Tato basketball, you know, looking at all of uh, Tato's earlier games and history and just really realizing how special this cab actually is still feel a bit guilty you know that i took out the uh, control set um for uh, the pc setup of course i still have all those parts and it can actually be reversed but remembering this was already converted to a pole position and also had all the led lights taken out of here and um, the original vertical orientation of the monitor that was all taken out previously before i bought it regardless of all that as we've mentioned <laughs> previously, such a bizarre game, Grand Champion, to be in a cockpit like this, because it's a 2D racer top-down. Um, so much, much better use of this cabinet now. Now I've got it for full driving games, PC, modern stuff, as well as emulated things. Um, and of course, I'm loving still playing my Model, Model 3 emulated um, driving games. And today is uh, no exception. We'll do a bit of Daytona USA uh, 2 um, because it's a great game. And you know, the original was a classic uh, and uh, the, the second one, it's growing on me actually. Um, and it's really, really nice, nicely emulated through the Supermodel 3 emulator uh, with full force feedback. And I'll tell you what, the force feedback on this is really strong, <laughs> which is cool because it's sort of like in the arcades when they really sort of gave it a bit of heft. Um, so you're really sort of working it around. So anyway, I reckon we should crank it up and uh, have a bit of a play. What, we'll, what I'll do is the cool thing about this cab, which I love so much, is you can take this uh, top piece off. Um, there's a separate section and three parts. So I'll take that off, I'll set the camera up behind and let's have a good old game of Daytona 2. Righto guys. <laughs> I love this music. Yes, yeah, it's cranking. Uh, I do like it, eh? I do. It really is growing on me. Okay, start her up. Let's do the yeah. Let's do the medium. Advanced. 
for the advanced. Uh, we'll go to the hard, professional. And we definitely want to go manual. And I've got the shifter sorted out here, guys. So, go down a little bit. Okay. This track. This <laughs> is the favourite. Fantasy, uh, fantasy track. Okay. Myself uh, into the zone here, guys, because it definitely behaves differently to the original Daytona, um, but has a, a similar thing in terms of you can oops, use the gears to get yourself uh, hanging out, and then from that perspective. You, you certainly can get the same sort of feel. Um, it's a little bit different, I guess. Wow. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, I was in third, I think, um, gear, which wasn't helping. Position 17, and I'm sort of hanging back a little bit so my top of my head doesn't get in the way of the camera, guys. Um, it's making it a little slightly harder to play, um, but I can't make excuses. <laughs> oh wow, it's just the force feedback that they've put on the Supermodel 3. Um, it's just so so cool. I mean, when you smack those cars. It really actually smacks you when the... I love that. Um, whoa! That's the other cool thing I like, how you just skid all the way around. Uh, it really smacks you in the, on the steering wheel. And I guess, um, of course, I'm missing the force feedback on my real Daytona. It's not working and I guess once I get that going, I'm going to get that sort of similar feeling that I'm getting here. Well, I'm not going to make it, am I? No. Your place. <laughs> Whew. Game over. Game over. Jeez. Select the race <laughs> Straight into the game. But guys, look, we've played it a few times before. I just wanted to have another crack at it. I do love it. Um, if I was crouched forward a little bit more, I could focus a little bit more, I think. But um, <laughs> nevertheless, it is a awesome game. Beautiful on the widescreen too, of course, which is the other cool thing about running it on the uh, Supermodel 3. Uh, but anyway, we shall uh, move on from this absolutely fantastic cabinet and get on to the last game. Well, guys, we're at the basketball and it's not turned on, but just before we uh, talk about this guy, uh, I didn't actually talk about what was the plans for the um, the Tato cockpit, uh, and that's because pretty much it's going to stay like it is for uh, the immediate future anyway. Um, I have got some plans potentially of swapping over the screen in there, um, but I think that's a little way off. So at the moment, really enjoying that cab for what it is, and we'll continue just to crank out the driving games to have fun. So anyway, looking at the basketball, well, why is it not on? If you looked at the first video, you would have seen the little... Uh, music video thing I did at the start you would have seen this guy working perfectly well what's happened it's still working <laughs> I just wanted to show the rather unique way it fires up um, and I've sort of worked out now why it does this sort of countdown um, so I remember when, when I first picked it up I was like why is it counting down when you first turn it on and it seems to be because it takes a while for all the components on the screen to come up. Now, initially I thought it was just the monitor having to, you know, come up and take, take its time to come up. But there's a bizarre thing, guys, because the bottom part of the screen sort of seems to come in a lot later. It's almost like, it's almost like the chips are doing it that way, but I can't see why that would be. So, I don't know. But anyway, I thought I'd turn it on 
get you guys to have a look at it, you can see what I mean. So let's switch it on. It always takes a while for anything to happen when you first turn it on, <laughs> which is the scary thing. And then hopefully, here we go, it <laughs> slowly comes up. And so you can sort of see like parts of the score there. And I mean, that's pretty bright. Like it doesn't seem like it's sort of, I don't know, it just seems weird to me that it starts sort of filling in. So we've got all the baskets, like the baskets have come up really strong. And, I, and look, maybe, and I'm sort of thinking this through now while it's coming up, maybe it's because this is really high intensity. So you can see that, but you can see at the bottom, we're missing the whole piece at the bottom here, guys. And this is still counting down, 51. And this is the bizarre thing. So at some point, um, this will start coming up. And I must admit, the reason why I'm doing this cold is because it takes a lot longer for this to happen. When it's warmer, it, it, it comes up faster. But it still does this sort of two thing. You can see it coming up here, see that? And this is really quite a solid bar of, um, of graphics. You know, and it comes up quite bright, but it's definitely not as bright as these parts. So maybe that's just it. Maybe it's just the, the, the warming up. I don't know. That's weird, eh? <laughs> it's really weird. Um, now we're at uh, zero, 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 and we're pretty much at full uh, luminosity. I'm still unsure why it says CC on one side and why it says C2 on the other. Guys, um, I haven't fixed the... Um, the pots yet in here. Uh, I I, I believe that um, the pots are wrong in here anyway. Um, they do work a little bit better now because I've sort of been just going backwards and forwards at them getting them going so I can actually sort of control them. This guy here seems probably about right. Like in terms of the range I can go right from the bottom all the way to the top and here I can actually can sort of control it. This, this is actually going to be really actually quite fun, guys. <laughs> I was just playing this myself the other day, and obviously you need two players to play it, but I thought, you know, this actually could be quite challenging. Um, and I'm hoping that it's going to be a lot of fun, but regardless of that, the fact that it's, you know, it's a variation of the original Pong and that it's working and stuff, it's just such, it's so gold. And guys, I've found out a lot more about this, you know, the bizarre thing about this cabinet, if you go back to that episode, make sure you watch that, guys, if you haven't seen it. Go back to the episode where I picked this machine up. Um, there's a lot more to the mystery, and I have since found other machines, pictures of them, um, and the findings are very interesting <laughs> in relation to this cabinet and Ali Pong and a number of the other ones in the series. So I might at some point put together a, a specific video which covers all that stuff in more detail and really goes into the history. I don't, well, you know, the plan for this channel was never to, going to run out here, to really do those sorts of like, you know, you know, formal documentary sort of stuff, but I just feel there's definitely a story here and some of the cool stuff that I've found I really want to share with you guys. Um, yeah, it's a really, really exciting stuff. So for now, oh the, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you while I was talking through there, if I started up, is I saying, this side works well. This side here, it only goes from there to there. It doesn't go all the way down. So I think the pot range is not right. Um, so it does sort of work. It works better than it did when I first picked it up because I have been obviously uh, playing around with it. Um, so it sort of works, but clearly that pot's not right. These guys, you know, can go all the way down to the bottom. Surely these guys should go down to the bottom, or maybe all the way to the top. I'm pretty sure they should go down to the bottom. That guy goes to that height. Yeah, so that, that's the height. It seems to be all the same. It's just when you go down, it doesn't go down. So anyway, guys, um, what, can I, what more can I say about this fantastic game? Um, just can't believe I've got a working example. So anyway, I shall definitely fix up those pots, which means, guys, we are at the end of the video, or are we? <laughs> what is the big secret? What is the new thing that happened this week in this arcade, which has changed my life? Well, 
we're gonna take a look at it. Let's check it out. And guys, here she is. <laughs> Well, not her, <laughs> exactly. I've got a beautiful wife, so I don't need this beautiful woman here. Um, but if you picked it already, and you, and you may not, guys, because it's really hard to portray what I've actually got behind me, depending on what you're watching this on. Because this, guys, um, is an OLED 65-inch LG screen. So I finally pulled the trigger on one. I know I mentioned before uh, that I was looking to do that and couldn't really justify the dollars. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, it is a OLED 65 inch display. Replaces the projector that was here. Took the screen down yesterday. Um, got a wall mount set up. Got this beast uh, hooked up. And the reason why I'm showing you this particular image, and again, it, it really probably won't translate well, but the blacks, <laughs> the blacks on an OLED screen, guys, are infinite. <laughs> I'm, I'm not lying here. Um, the bizarre thing is, as I had this up on the wall, all the other stuff that it is in the theater that's black, with speakers and stuff, are not as black as this. <laughs> like this is, this is like inky black. This is black hole black this is like light doesn't escape black it's <laughs> really really bizarre but the more amazing thing with it is that once you start getting the subtleties of the different blacks like in this dress here you can still see all the details as the blacks come up and um up in range in terms of color and light and reflection and and that's the other thing is that the like the high dynamic range on the on these screens is that all the reflections just to sparkle um, and again guys I don't know how this looks it's probably gonna look crap through this camera and it's such a shame because um, you know this this image for me as I look at it here could basically be like real life for me <laughs> that's that's how accurate it is um, and it just blows my mind <laughs> it just absolutely blows my mind now I knew guys going into it Going from the projector, projector was always obviously a light source from the front, it was always had horrible greys. In the previous videos you've probably seen the projector and thought, geez Greg, come on, that looks really crap. But actually, it always looks crap in the videos previously because I've had to have other lights on like I have right now to light me up, otherwise I'm too dark. And that's why it's always looked grey in other videos. Normally if the room is really dark, the projector still actually looks really good. You just It never gets these sorts of blacks obviously, but it does actually look pretty good. The difference now, of course, guys, is that I've got the full light source on me right now. I can put this whole, like, in the daytime, I can put the whole room in pure light and have the arcade, like, in daylight. And this screen still just absolutely is astounding. Um, it just pops. Whatever you're doing on here is just incredible. It's pretty much the same size. Probably if I, if there was a 75 inch, it would have fit it better um, in terms of getting exactly the sort of size I had before with the projector. It's 65 inch though, it's a little bit smaller, um, but by no means does it detract from the awesomeness that it is. So let me flick this into some electric sheep just to get some colors and stuff going. And let's continue the story. Okay guys, so I've got electric sheep running here. Um, it's only 1080p and it's off, uh, off YouTube. Um, but I had, I'm sort of showing you this because I've actually got the full light source, like our full floodlight that I use to light me up here. And I'd never be able to do this obviously with, a, with the projector screen because it, it would just white it out. Um, and even now it's struggling, that light is struggling to get, get me bright enough because the sheer brightness of the OLED screen. Look at me, I'm, I'm darkling up here. I'm trying to, if I tap myself to try and get the contrast in, so I'm a bit closer here. Um, trying to get this balance, what a nightmare. Can't get this balance at all. But that's just because of how bright and colorful the screen is, guys. And I just, it's, Look, it's one of those things you can't put into words. If you've gone out and seen one of these out in, in store, um, you'll get a bit of a sense for it. Um, look, it, it looks just as good in the store as it does at home, you know, during the day, at night. 
it looks incredible as well but I mean it doesn't look any less incredible like during the day just because it's just so incredible and again I'm so disappointed that it's not really not really going to show the essence and the beauty of this thing guys so I'm going to have to try and explain to you here why this was actually a, actually a life-changing purchase it really was and I was going to get you know I was actually almost going to get right up to like an 80 uh, inch screen for here and it was going to be just you know a QLED or one of the latest LED technologies rather than um, OLED and I was, I was looking at it I just thought well, you know what if I'm really going to spend quite a bit of coin maybe I should just get something that I'll be really really happy with and satisfied with given the fact that this is something that I would use a lot and I have been using a lot um, and I would keep for years and years and years and I think fundamentally guys you know in life really comes down to that for a lot of things like you know your bed <laughs> your sleep and half your life you know your car if you're going to work to and fro all the time um, and you know things like this which you would use again and again and again like spend spend t more money on those things guys and get the quality that you want it may seem like it's expensive at the time but you're going to get the value you know if you're using that stuff again and again all the time you're going to definitely get the value um this definitely is not not showing the, the potential of the screen this demo but some of these uh, bright colors are pretty cool um so i had a situation where i had some money um and i could have actually gone and bought this but you know i still was very difficult for me guys to put down the coin for this so this is the lg c7 uh, 65 inch OLED screen and they're expensive they've come down a bit in price there's lots of deals going on so there was a deal going on at Harvey Norman and they had a 60 month interest free um, and half the time guys those interest free things are there to catch you because you then get a card and then you use it for other things and they've got horrible high interest rates for all your other stuff uh, or if you don't pay it off on the 60 months you start paying horrendous interest after that but if you actually pay that off over that t time you, you really do get the interest free there's a, a couple of fees that they charge along the way so they keep a little money back nothing's for free guys so, but I thought you know what it's better me having the money that I had for this in my bank earning interest and then being able to have an interest free payment arrangement to pay it off that actually made a lot of sense um, and funnily enough, oh geez, look at this, <laughs> the black. Uh, funnily enough, um, they also had, uh, it was, or A, it was discounted, B, it was 60 months interest free, and C, there was a $500 store back credit. Well, $500 was basically 10% um, of, the, of the purchase price, so there you go. It was up to, up to 5K, and the reason why it was 5K, though, was because I bought a, uh, a Blu-ray 4K Ultra HD player as well, because, of course, um, you need that to play the Ultra HD 4K content, which when you do on here, just completely blows your mind. Um, so yeah, between the two was basically four and a half K and then that basically 5K, 500 back in store credit. So four and a half and then 60 months um, interest free. So I can live with that guys. Um, it's a little bit out of the pay each month and um, I will still keep the cash there so if I ever have to pay it off for any reason um, I can do so and um, you know I'm not not at risk so I just thought well this is a really l low risk way of buying this thing uh, and not being sort of out of out of out of pocket in, in a way um, so anyway guys that, that's the story in terms of the, the way I purchased it because yeah I would not have sort of just dumped down 5k on this um, with the player as well but even 4.5k would just seem like a lot um, having said that is it worth it well this is the thing guys after absolutely drooling over this thing yesterday or for the whole weekend <laughs> uh, I I thought well let's watch one of the 4k movies and i'll watch it with my two boys um dylan and mitch and geez i still can't believe how dark i'm looking here given the fact the light is here. look let me show you <laughs> let me just show you this Actually, if i stand here it's better let me show you look here's the light source right there <laughs> so, you can see right yeah if i stand here it's probably a bit better i'm not in the uh in the dark so much 
Um, so anyway, I thought um, it'd be nice to um, watch a movie with my boys on the setup, and of course they've just been astounded by the the colours and all the rest of it. So we sat down and we we watched Suicide Squad. And guys, seriously, I haven't watched the movie. Um, What's well, been out two three years. I've not watched it, and the reason being was I remember there was some like really bad, re well not bad reviews, but like there was reviews initially about the movie and how it had all these torture scenes and stuff and wasn't appropriate, blah blah blah. And my kids were a little bit younger then too, and so I didn't sort of see it because of that. Um, and funnily enough, I didn't even see it myself, which was sort of a bit, bit strange. Um, but then I saw a short or a trailer the other day of it, um, just from one of those YouTube spiral events. <laughs> start looking at you know one thing and end up watching um, the exploding cat videos um, and I thought shit that actually looks pretty good um, and so when I picked up this I thought well I'll get a few 4k HD uh, uh, ultra HD videos uh, uh, blu-rays rather and I picked up Suicide Squad watched it with the two boys I just set up an extra couple of speakers on the uh, the amplifier because it does actually support um, basically 7.1 7 so I set that up and sat there, watched the movie with the boys on the screen, guys. Um, and I just thought, wow, it was just like an amazing experience. You know, and it wasn't just the movie and everything, it was just sharing that moment with my boys. I just thought, well, this is cool. This is something that I can actually repeat and, you know, we can watch other really cool movies together and enjoy that stuff. Um, and it was just a nice opportunity to have you know a bit of bonding time in the in the arcade um, with my two sons um, and just enjoying this technical marvel so I'm uh, that's that's why and, I, and I'm it might that might sound corny it might sound bizarre guys I mean you guys might have um, TVs and you're just like well it's a nice picture Greg but you know it's not changing my life anytime soon uh, but for me guys going from the the projector and what it was coming and, go, and going to this I'm just I, I can't stop looking at it <laughs> I, just, I just keep loading up different content I've been running up games and you know putting the PC on there at 4k resolution um, it's just been unbelievable and look we'll come back to it i'm sure um and look at other you know specific things specific games and bits and pieces and um and talk about it a little bit more another time i don't want to spend too much more on this video on it um air, but you can see i mean just look at that i mean look at me i'm bright as and look at this this black and the it really, it really is good guys, it really is good. I think if you're close, if you've been like on the fence for getting one of these TVs, just, just now, leave, go, go get into your car, go down and pick one of these up. Now of course the 55 inch by the way, if you've got a slightly smaller um, seating environment or you don't mind having a slightly smaller screen, pick up the 55, that's only like 2K, so like 2.2K, that's a no brainer if you want to if slightly smaller one 55 to 65 it doesn't sound a lot it does make a big difference you know in terms of overall impact but smaller area 55 guys pick one of those up a lot of guys now are picking up like the 55 and using it as their workspace you know running it at 4k on a pc and then just running their games in front of them <sighs> seriously guys it's the it's it's where it's all going to go like forget all the lcd technology prior to this it's all junk, <laughs> it really is, even the IPS displays. You know, they don't get close anywhere near this when it comes to the fantastic contrast ratio from absolute infinite black all the way up to really, really bright colors. You know, you see fire come up in a, in a dark lit night scene. My God, it's just like, wow. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some of you will be laughing, I'm sure. Yeah, you probably think, geez, this guy ever said, like, only it's been out for a while. Where have you been, Matt? Well, seriously, I haven't, uh, I haven't been in front of them for enough time, and I've been purposely avoiding them in stores, guys, because just for the sheer price of them, I just didn't want to actually be tempted. Um, but so glad. So anyway, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. I am going on and on here. Um, I'll show you some other content another time. Uh, that will really show it off a lot better but for now guys that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed the close out of the uh, the plans for 2018 for the arcade as you can see it's a lot of little tweaks and a few little bits and pieces i'm doing for each machine 
yes, I'm starting to feel like I've locked in these key machines here. I've locked in the way that this arcade is is uh, positioned. Now that I've ticked this off with getting the OLED um, display and got rid of the projector and by the way that was the little hint earlier on <laughs> you would have seen that the projector was gone in that early uh, the very first scene that we did today um, but yeah I've got all I've got all the part well all the pieces you know ready for this ultimate arcade now it's just tweaking um, but there's still as I always say there's still lots more on guys lots more on but uh, yeah if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe lots of crazy stuff coming up <laughs> always crazy stuff coming up and um, this journey just keeps on keeping on uh, but until then um, before I do sit down and watch this some more because I'm definitely gonna watch this some more tonight I do want to have a few games of a few things here but you know guys I'm um, I've been, uh, you know, so much, so far out of coin because uh, how much this has cost. I just really don't have any any money left. So, um, got a twenty. Chicken fight like a robot.